Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, welcome back to this lecture series on great experiments in psychology. In today's session, we are going to talk about something very different. We are going to talk about sex roles and how we perceive ourselves, whether we see ourselves as being more masculine or more feminine, whether it actually goes with uh, our uh, gender specific roles as in if I am a female, do I see myself as uh, doing more of the feminine tasks or do I actually have uh, do a lot of masculine tasks as perceived by society. And this sex role um, perception or uh, this uh, idea of psychological androgyny or androgyny as it is called by some was first discussed by a feminist and specifically Sandra Bem in 1974. And I thought that this would be a good session to take up uh, primarily because uh, here uh, we are in today's session we are going to talk about uh, how uh, Bem formed this concept of androgyny and how uh, she actually developed a scale to measure androgyny and the different sex rules. So, uh, to understand what was the uh, status of uh, sex role identification in society uh, prior to the 1970s, the prevalent view primarily within psychology and also outside that is within society was that an individual could be either masculine or feminine. So, that is people who achieved a good fit with their sex type or sex role that is a masculine male or a more feminine female were assumed to be better adjusted physiologically as well as it, they were assumed to be psychologically healthier than those who did not. Now, there were several tests which were measuring the sex role, especially between the 30s and the 60s and uh, some of the famous scales are from Terman and Miles, but this made it impossible. The sc uh, scales were structured in such a way that it did not uh, actually uh, measure anything, but uh, the masculinity in males and the femininity in females. So, uh, and these scales were thus very mutually exclusive. Now, that means that the nearer the masculine end of the scale you scored, the further away from the feminine end you were. So, this is like a linear continuum and where, so if an individual, if a male is uh, scoring more on the masculinity scale, uh, on the, the masculine traits. So, since it is a linear continuum, that individual will be very low on the feminine traits. While for a female, if the individual, if it is, uh, if he rates himself as somewhere higher on the feminine scale, then likewise he will be, he, she will be very low on the masculine side, on the masculine uh, characteristics. Now, uh, it was, so this made it impossible to identify androgynous people that is individuals who displayed both the masculine as well as feminine characteristics. Now, androgynous comes from the word andro that is male and gyne that is female. So, an individual androgynous means that an individual who has both the masculine characteristics as well as feminine characteristics. Now, uh, before the 70s as I said this concept was unthinkable and See, as we move in society as per the desirability of the society. So, most of the times individuals would behave a masculine, uh, per a male would behave more uh, towards the, I mean expressing more masculine traits and female expressing more feminine traits. Otherwise, it would be considered as pathological. So, one could not have both the traits. But uh, that is why Bem's study on the sex roles and especially on androgyny was a revolutionary study and that is also one of the reasons why I uh, brought this up in this section 
and um, we will also see how she actually um, conducted constructed her test. So, when scores uh, on these tests, these previous tests were factored and analyzed, it was seen that the uh, same temperamental factors kept emerging. That is, masculine factors would be independent, assertive, dominant, and instrumental, and feminine would be interpersonal sensitivity, compassion, and warmth. And these corresponded closely with other scales. So, the sociological ideas, uh, perspectives by Parson and Bales, and the anthropological ideas of Barry and others in 1957. And these were primarily the universal concepts of masculinity and femininity. But by the early 1970s, there were several researchers who had challenged this traditional view and stated that the same individual could have both masculine as well as feminine traits. So, it is not a linear continuum with the two poles being masculinity and femininity, but a person could have high, could be high on both masculine traits as well as feminine traits or could be low on both or medium on both. So, masculinity and femininity, femininity was explained as independent dimensions for the first time in the 70s. And this shift in perspective owed a great deal to the feminist movement as I have spoken earlier and one of the revolutionaries was Sandra Bem. So, to discover androgyny, a different sort of test was required and which would produce two logically independent scores. So, it would have uh, one scale that would actually characterize masculinity and the other would have to be on femininity. So, that is how uh, BEM came out with came about with the idea of the sex role inventory and it is named after her. So, it is known as the BEM sex role inventory and this is, was the first and the most influential of these tests. Several tests were administered were created constructed later, but this is the first one on sex role and especially to uh, assess androgyny, androgyny and um, this is one of the most influential of the tests even it is used still and you will see publications even in uh, as uh, frequently as in 2013 and 2016. Uh, using BEM, uh, BEM scales. So, uh, BEM published this article on the measurement of psychological androgyny, androgyny in uh, 1974 in the Journal of Consulting in Clinical Psychology and uh, she here she describes the development of the BSRI. So, uh, the implicit prediction of this scale was it should be possible to design a questionnaire which reliably and validly measures a person's degree of masculinity, femininity or and androgyny. So, uh, this questionnaire has two sub scales. So, each has uh, with 20 items and 20 neutral items. So, 20 items are on masculinity. So, that is how masculine is your psychological profile and uh, 20 on femininity that is how feminine is your psychological profile and the scores are rated on a 7 point scale. And so, if you have a score of 4, you are exactly in the middle. So, if people score above median on both scales, they are considered to be androgynous. So, that is, so if, if somebody has a high masculinity as well as a high femininity score, then they are known to be androgynous. Now, uh, let us see the construction of the test. So, to start with, uh, it we needed to, he Ben needed to have an item selection. So, uh, what she did was, she compiled a list of 200 personality traits that seem to be both positive in value and either masculine or feminine in tone. And this list served as a pool from which the masculine and feminine items were ultimately chosen. Other than this, an additional list of around 200 traits was compiled which seem to be neither masculine or nor feminine in tone. So, these traits were half positive and half negative in value and from this she actually came about with a social desirability scale. So, the traits were taken for the social desirability scale were taken from this list of 200 traits of which conduct which actually had both positive as well as negative traits. Hmm. The judges or the participants. Now, this scale, these uh, traits, so many, were actually given to the judges 
and these judges were none other than the participants of 40 Stanford University undergraduates who completed the questionnaire in 1972. And later on, there were 60 more people who actually became judges in 1973. And in both the samples, it was a, an equal division of males and females. So then this, after uh, these traits were collected and the judges were given, what were the judges supposed to do? The BSRI was designed to measure how much a person distances himself or herself from those characteristics that might be considered more appropriate for the opposite sex. So the final items were selected if they were judged to be more desirable in US society for one sex than the other. So actually what is being taken into account is also the social perception. So here that is why uh, they were also the final items were selected if they were judged to be more sociable. So that is uh, more desirable in the US society. So if the trait was this was going to actually mark the social desirability item. So whether the traits were more appreciable in society. So that would also identify with specific masculine traits as how the society perceives masculinity and how the society perceives femininity. So of course, these change with the times. So think about uh, a female in the, um, in the 70s and think about a female even in our society today in the 2010s, 2017 now. Uh, the, the perception of the female is very different of the sex role of the female is very different from what perception we had uh, or what was how uh, it was the sex role was explained in the 70s. So say 40 years before, 40, 50 years before. So uh, it is also, so the we must understand that the society has a major role to play when we are identifying with the sex rule. And that was why Bem took this into consideration. And the judges were used a seven point scale ranging from one that is not at all desirable to seven which was extremely desirable to rate the 400 personality characteristics. So we have the 200 personality traits for masculinity and femininity and 200 traits that was half positive and half negative value for social desirability. And uh, the judges were asked to, that is 100 judges, they were asked to rate these on a uh, 7 point scale and where 1 was not at all desirable and 7 was extremely desirable. And each judge rated the desirability all of all the 400 traits either for a man or for a woman and they did it only for one person. So that is no judge rated both. So one either did it for a man or did it for a woman. And uh, a personality trait qualified as masculine if it was independently judged by both males and females in both samples to be significantly more desirable for a man than for a woman. So if, uh, an, if a trait is supposed to be masculine, then it has to be judged as masculine by both a man as well as a woman. And it should be significantly more desirable for a man than a woman and it was the same with the femininity traits. Now after those traits were selected, it was found that 20 were chosen. So the, the traits that actually matched the criteria were 20 uh, for masculinity scale and 20 for the femininity scale, femininity scale. So there were 40 that were selected. And uh, the masculinity scale, what, was, uh, what were the traits it included? So primarily aggressive, competitive and self-reliant. And for the femininity scale, it included items like uh, or traits like compassionate, sensitive to the needs of others and yielding. A neutral trait on the other hand was one which was independently by judged by both males and females to be no more desirable for one sex than the other. So it was not specific for a particular sex. So that was how uh, it did not uh, and it did not produce significantly different desirability ratings by male or female judges. So it was not specifically more desirable for a male or a female and it was not judged differently by a male or a female. 
So, like this you know 10 positive and 10 negative traits were taken that met the criteria and were chosen for the social desirability scale. So, actually as we have discussed earlier this scale consists of 60 items. So, that would be 20 for masculinity scale, 20 for femininity scale and 20 for the social desirability scale. So, once all the individual items had been selected, the mean desirability scores were computed for each of the scales. So, that is for masculine, feminine and neutral items and for the 100 judges. So, for both the males and females, the mean desirability of 40 masculine and feminine items were significantly higher for the appropriate sex. Now, this uh, probably we would be able to assume at phase validity, but here you know what is more important is that we are not going by intuition. In the previous class, we spoke about not going for in by intuition, but being a professional psychologist and dealing with things in a more experimental way. So, here you see that the um, this was done very statistically following the rules of methodology and it was seen that the mean desirability of the 40 masculine and feminine items were say so that is for, for the mas masculine items it was significantly higher for the male sex and the feminine items the mean desirability was more uh, was significantly higher by the female sex. While the neutral items for the neutral items it was no higher for one sex or the other. So, it was more or less uh, similar. So, these results of course, were a direct consequence of the criteria used for selecting the items. Actually that was this, uh, this uh, test showed that the items had been properly selected. So, the male items were, um, were different from the female items. Uh, so, the ma masculinity items were different from the femininity items and naturally the neutral items were not comparable with the uh, with either masculinity was not related to either masculinity or femininity. So, now let us come to the scoring. So, the BSRI or the BEM sex role inventory asks people to indicate on a 7 point scale how well each of the masculine feminine and neutral traits describes themselves. So, it is a subjective scale where the individual has to assess himself or herself and say that how well does a particular trait define himself so or herself on a 7 point rating. And the scale ranges from 1 that is never or almost never true to 7 always or almost always true. And what is the score that the individual gets after administration? So, each person receives a masculinity score, a femininity score and most importantly an androgyny score. In addition, there is also a social desirability score that can be calculated. The masculinity and femininity scores indicates how much a person endorses masculine and feminine traits as self descriptive. So, that is the masculinity scores is the mean self rating for all endorsed masculine items and the femininity score would be the mean self rating for all the endorsed feminine items. And now both can range between 1 and 7, 1 to 7 and the two scores are in independent. That is why we get an individual masculinity score and a, an individual femininity score, femininity score. And the androgyny, now to explain androgyny, it is the relative amount of masculinity and femininity the person includes in his or her self description. So, it best characterizes the nature of his or her total sex role. So, as, as Bem argued that it is not necessary that a male needs to will always have high uh, masculinity uh, traits and low femininity traits and a female will have high femininity traits and low masculinity traits. There could be traits that with, uh, with would have that an individual might have that uh, would include both masculinity and femininity. And so, one simple way of cal calculating androgyny is femininity score minus the masculinity score is the androgyny difference score. And the greater the value of the androgyny score, the more the person is sex typed or sex reversed. 
So, it says that the high positive scores indicates femininity and that is how the scale is constructed and the high negative scores indicate masculinity. So, a masculine sex role represents not only the endorsement of masculine traits, but the simultaneous rejection of the feminine traits, while a feminine uh, sex role is just the uh, difference. By contrast, the closer the androgeny score is to 0, the more pers uh, the person is androgenous. Now, that is the, the individual has both masculine as well as feminine traits. Now, that is obvious because if you see that an individual is more or less pa at par with the femininity and the masculinity score. So, say if a person has a masculinity score of uh, 55 and a femininity score of 52, it is this is a male. So, uh, femininity score minus masculinity score would actually give a score of 3. So, here um, the, the more, so this shows that the more it is closer to 0, so the more one it is par. So, that shows that the individual has both the traits, so the more the individual is androgynous. Now, coming to the social desirability score, the social desirability score indicates how much a person describes himself or herself in a socially desirable way or neutral items. And that is again this ranges from 1 to 7. So, that is whether we want to be perceived as um, uh, more approving of our social role. So, now mind you these are on neutral items. So, um, whether an individual wants to see himself as more pleasing, more comforting, more congenial. So, now these are items I am just thinking out aloud. So, if you if you take the BSRI, it is available online, you will uh, be able to see, you will identify the neutral items from which actually the social desirability is calculated. And uh, it indicates, uh, so as I said, it is uh, between a 1 to 7 uh, rating uh, scale and one indicating a strong tendency to describe oneself as socially undesirable. So, if say uh, somebody um, say if there is a trait on um, being com um, uh, congenial, uh, there if a person says friendly, say friendly. So, this if the person says that uh, scores a 1, rates himself as a 1. So, uh, that would be a, a strong tendency to describe one's, uh, oneself in a socially undesirable direction. If this person rates himself as 7, then it would be more towards a socially, de socially desirable uh, direction. So, now coming to the psychometric analysis, when we are constructing a test, so as you see in this uh, BSRI, uh, the item selection was done, then the judges rated it and then after that it was uh, the median values were found and then after that it was administered on people. Now, so there when we are actually administer, uh, no, what is important is to have to standardize a test. So, to standardize so that we can actually generalize the results and standardization means that we need to have the test needs to be reliable, valid and have norms. Uh, so, uh, especially for the population that it has been conducted on. So, the BSRI was given to 444 males and 279 females introductory psychology students at Stanford and 217 males and 77 female paid vol volunteers. So, after that after administration correlation tests were conducted between the social disability score and the masculinity, femininity and androgyny scores for the two samples separately and the social disability score and the absolute value of the androgyny score. So, we have the social disability score and masculinity, femininity and androgyny and the, the, that was done separately and then the social disability score with the absolute androgyny score. And it was seen that both masculinity and femininity scores were correlated with social desirability. So, there is this tendency of um, giving responses in a more socially reliable uh, desirable way when we are talking of our sex role types. So, um, near 0 correlations were seen between androgyny and social desirability. So, it was it could be said that the androgyny score was not measuring 
a general tendency to respond in a socially desirable direction. So, then the test retest reliability was uh, uh, conducted and um, the BSRI was given for a second time to test the reliability of the test. It was given for a second time to 28 males and 28 females from the Stanford normative sample about 4 weeks after the test after the first test. And uh, participants were told that the researchers were interested in how their responses on the test might vary over time and more explicitly instructed not to try to remember what they had given as their first uh, responses. So, preliminary responses that is. So, it was seen that there was a very high correlation between the first and second test for all the four scores. So, that is between masculinity, femininity, androgyny and social desirability. And so, this test was extremely reliable. Now, coming to the validity and norms. This uh, to test the validity, it was uh, again uh, correlated with uh, the two other tests, primarily the masculinity femininity scales of the California psychological inventory and the Guilford Zimmerman temperament inventory. Now, this showed very interesting results. The California psychology inventory was moderately correlated with the masculinity femininity and androgyny scales of the BSRI. But the Guilford Zimmerman temperament inventory was not correlated with the BSRI scales. Now, coming to the norms uh, for both the samples that was for the primary as well as the retest, males scored significantly higher than females on the masculinity scale, females scored significantly higher than males on the femininity scale. And on the two measures of androgeny, males scored on the masculine side of 0 and females on the feminine side of 0. So, this difference was significant for both measures in both samples. So, now that tells us a lot about construction of a scale. So, if you wish to uh, do some research in psychology especially for constructing a scale, then I would suggest that uh, you know there are several books that you could go through. Uh, one of them being Kretsch and Crutchfield on social psychology. There was there is another famous book by Horowitz, and but um, you know this is the starting point. This was how it was done. So you can actually this is a real time uh, study that produced for the first time because before this it was actually is not showing too many masculine. from mental health problems mental health problems and but bem study uh, uh, showed question of mental health and to begin focusing on the behavioral and societal you know actually you could you could try out this have if you are a male how much of the feminine traits you have and similarly similarly you know you so it would it would uh, it is a study on ourselves especially and you could um, a generation before and you see whether there is too much of there is too much of dispersion or if it is your mother then uh, is she as compared to I mean if, if other feminine the feminine trait I mean you could just try this out um, and generation then with your friends and peers friends and peers also. So, this if a female has more of that um, she has a mental health uh, sex roles. So, our so our societal reactions or demand that uh, that uh, we have this study actually shows. So, so uh, best individuals show sex role adaptability as 
the situation requires, even though this. So, a um, female may be more masculine and adjusting and accommodating. On the other side, it could be, uh, you know, like the sex roles have been uh, predefined in current society, the male may be cooking and more compassionate towards the child and more considered doing more of household chores and uh, which was considered as a female um, role earlier. So, even psychologically the traits could be both present um, in, I mean both traits could be present in a male as well as a female. Now, Lubinsky et al. also in 1981 found that androgynous people report feeling greater emotional well-being. So, they are more adjusted and accommodated and more happy. And Spence et al. also in 1975 found that they have higher self-esteem. So, basically in this study, there are two main hypotheses that are derived. So, first that is the scores on the BSRI predict certain kinds of behavioral preference. And second, that androgeny is a good indicator of psychological well-being and mental health. This is, this is the first study of its kind that actually contradicts the sex role typing that was done earlier. And this, uh, this uh, study has also brought about, uh, uh, this is a reflection of society and also brought about a change in the way people started perceiving themselves. So, I thought that this would be a good study to actually introduce in our uh, lecture series. Thank you.